Okay, today, brakes on a shit box. So we're gonna change the brake pads on this shit box, but it applies to any shit box. Best thing you wanna do is jack the car up. So, probably easy to do both sides at once so you can see jacking locations allow the car to get both the wheels off the ground. That's a good start. If you don't have chassis stands, just don't lay under this car or any car that's jacked up. Never trust hydraulics. Probably one of the first rules of mechanics or anything really. Never trust hydraulics. All right, so if you're not going to lay under there, that means you can stand about chassis stands, I guess. You want to get the wheels off because that's where the brake pads are behind the wheels. I'm going to do the fronts first. So if you don't have a rattle gun or a tool like that, you will need to crack the wheel nuts before you jack the car up. But we have a rattle gun, so we're just gonna rattle gun the wheel nuts off. So if you are gonna use a rattle gun, just remember the less things, like extension bar, whatever, the less that's in front of the impact gun, the more chance you'll have of, of undoing it. Always good to inspect the tyre when you take it off. Wheel. Looks good. And these are the guys we want to replace today. The brake pads. So, on most shit boxes, if you've gotten the wheel out of the way, this assembly can be a little bit different. So, the caliper's either going to have to come off or flip out of the way. So that's the main bracket that holds the caliper. It's usually attached to the stub axle. So in most circumstances, you can just leave that on there. Okay, as mentioned, bracket, caliper, and these are the slides. So what the slides do is they allow the caliper to center or move so that when you put your foot on the brake and that little piston comes out through the hy hydraulic line, it clamps onto the disc rotor. It allows the slides allow it to center so that one pad isn't hard against it and one pad loose. So they both sort of grab on. That's the idea anyway. So once you've worked out where the slides are, you can loosen both of them. And at this point, you should be able to work out if you need to take out one or two. With most brakes, you'll have enough to pivot it out of the way. Or down, I mean, some might let you go the other way too, not this one, because the line's at the top, but may allow you to pivot up take the pads out like that but anyway that one's already undone so at this point we just want to move the pads so we'll get a screwdriver on these pads free. all right so you can see they're pretty worn we have almost three times more material than that usually the back one will wear faster sorry the front one will wear faster the back one Usually a little less. Anyway, they're well past the use by date, so I'm going to grab the new pads, bang them in. So we've removed the caliper, we've got the old brake pads out. Um, at this point, you probably want to grab a chair, something to sit on. So I'll grab this little comfy fella here. So yeah, we're going to take a little seat. And we're going to check the pads. So these are our new pads. Always a good idea before you get stuck in. Make sure you have the correct pads. And also make sure you take notice of where this little fella is. Or any sensors. That's a squeal tab. So that'll tell you when your pads are getting low. It starts to make a noise. You can see that one's had a bit of wear on it. Because it started to make a noise. It'll tell you that you need to change your pads. So that one's been at the back. Pretty safe to say. Because that's, that's where the piston's been pushing on it. And these are our new pads, so we're going to make sure that our squeal tab is the right, right way around and facing the right way. Alright, so we've figured out they're the right pads. Got them in there, got the squeal tab in the right spot. Um, certainly look out for sensors. They'll, on some cars they'll have a position on the pad to tell you the pads are down electronically. So you want to make sure that's in the right place, you can still plug it in or unplug it. Uh, next thing you want to do is... Go to the brake reservoir. 
also once you've done that you want to find a rag not one you're going to reuse so probably not your mum's underwear it is a skin irritant and also an eye irritant for yourself so um make sure it's a rag that you're possibly going to throw away at the end of this i don't have my tool here but it's a great opportunity to show you another way to do it if you don't have special tools i guess what i'm going to do Um, is here's one of the old pads like this I'll put it back on the piston like that I'm gonna put a G clamp on there like that and then what we're gonna do is just wind it in and that's gonna push the piston back in which then push fluid back into the reservoir and that's why you've got the rag around there to catch any fluid so it doesn't go into the concrete unless you know here at someone's house you don't really like is amazing so we use the g-clamp and the uh, brake pad, old brake pad to push the piston back you don't want to go too far you want to go enough just so you can slide it back over these going back too far might actually be detrimental and might pick up some crap in there it might um might bottom out the rubber even pop the rubber off so you just want to go back as far as you have to to get it back on here and clear those pads which should be pretty easy to work out so it should just fit back on like that you may have to push the slides back in obviously because they they're in a different position now so once you've done that and it's sitting back on there we can put the bolts back in um, make sure the line isn't twisted also if you've been maintaining your vehicle and as those pads have worn down somebody if not you, has been topping up the brake fluid. So what will happen is this brake fluid, once we push the pistons back, it'll start to, and the level will change in the reservoir. It might even overflow and go onto the ground. That's why we've got this rag I mentioned before. So, once we've got that done, we'll make sure it's nice and, you know, nothing's binding. We wanna get these two bolts back in. If you've only pulled out one, you probably wanna, just put the other one back in, whichever one that was, but I've got two to put back in, so get those back in and tightened up. These you don't want to do up too tight, they're not high tensile bolts. Okay, so while in most cases they're not high tensile bolts anyway. So you just want to do those back up. You may have to hold this hex part on the slide because what will happen is once you get it so tight, the slide may turn and start spinning, which means you'll never be able to do that tight enough. So you may need a spanner, usually 17, 18 mil, something like that, to hold this. All right. So we've got the caliper bolter back on. We do want to check that the rotor turns nice and free. Depending on your setup, this disc may float free, it's not make it hard to turn, but most cars will have these locator screws or these screws that push the disc onto the hub assembly. Okay, and that'll keep it nice and straight and even. So you've got to turn that, make sure it's not jammed or the pad's not clocked, not interfering. All right, so we don't need to bleed this. Well, you know, you can if you want, I guess. Um, but doing it this way, you won't need to bleed it. Obviously, you want to check it when you test drive it. Let's get stuck into the rest. All right, so what I like to do to stop that reservoir from overflowing a little is, once you've done one, just get in and give the pedal some really light, really light pumps until it gets hard. It's important not to go all the way to the floor. Pumps until it gets hard again. And then that would have pushed the brake fluid back through the line into the caliper. All right, so we would have lost a little bit of fluid there. It's gone down a little bit. It's back in the caliper. Not as much as before, obviously, because the pads aren't out as far, which means the piston isn't out as far. Oh. 
Okay, so onto the other side of the front, it's the same procedure. So remove the wheel, remove the caliper as before, push the piston back. So obviously take the pads out, push the piston back, get some fluid back up in that reservoir, and then we'll move on to the rears. Again, important to make sure you've got the squeal tab or um, what else would it be called? I'm not sure. I call it a squeal tab. It makes a noise. It's that squealing noise when you need brake pads. Um, make sure it matches up. It's in the right spot. Also, any sensors. So you might have some wires coming out of here, as I mentioned before. And they can be for like a dash warning light um, to, tell the, to tell you that you need pads. In this case, it's just an audio warning. That'll squeal on the rotor itself. I'll show you on the old ones. You can see that it gets down far enough that it actually makes contact with the rotor. It makes a squealing noise. So yeah, let's get on to the other side. I don't know if that's a dog or Chewbacca from Star Wars. Anyway, we're checking these wheel nuts because we've done that with a rattle gun. So, so peace of mind when they go through manually. Let's check these. They don't have to be too tight, obviously. You don't want to crank it up ridiculously tight like a tire shop does so you never get your wheels off. So same thing, we're going to find a spot to jack the rear up. Probably... This front wheel drive car, so probably off that that center, that thing right there. I guess you call it a cross member. All right, so another two for one deal. Let's get on that cross member. Again, no jack stands. Just don't lay under the car. It's not worth it. Um, it's like the front ones really shouldn't be much different again check the tire looking good so sometimes these rear calipers obviously are going to be smaller in most cases almost all cases are going to be a smaller caliper usually a non-vented disc um it should look the same though just a lot smaller there's your pins there's your bolts that you want to undo. We'll see there's the pads that we're going to change. You can see they're a lot smaller. Um, there's the brake line, same as the front. Some cars may have drums on the rear, but we're talking about brake pads today, obviously. Um, now the handbrake is usually the most complicated thing about these rear calipers, especially on 90s model Japanese cars, or even Aussies cars too, I guess, maybe some others. But they'll have this sort of lever type handbrake so rather than a shoe inside the rotor they'll have a lever type handbrake like this now the best thing is just to work around it try and ignore it usually works on a spiral drive or like a um i don't know what you call it <laughs> spiral drive i guess is the best thing and how like a screw and how it works is when they pull the handbrake on the screw will turn and push the caliper out push the piston out in the caliper and that'll lock your brakes on onto grab onto this and it'll it'll have need a special tool usually to wind it back um in some cases it's separate which i'm pretty sure on this it's separate so we'll um we'll crack that off and have a look 
Okay, so here we are at the rears again. So we'll usually keep the same hardware front to rear on most cars. So whatever tools you've used on the front should suffice for the rear. All right, so you can see here, our worst fear is confirmed. This uh, piston will need to be wound back. Um, so, you, you know, you can. there is a special tool for it. Usually you can get a pair of pliers or something in there to turn it. And what you want to do is just wind that back. Make sure the handbrake's off, um, obviously. And you want to wind that piston back in. So that you get enough clearance to put the pads back in. Okay, so this might be a little bit difficult to do by myself. Hold the camera and wind it. But anyway, it does work. So I'm just using these pointy nose pliers. Again, I do have the tool, not with me. So it's a good opportunity to show that you can do it with just average tools. So I just put the pliers in there and just turn that. In this case, it's clockwise and it's winding the piston back in. All right, so I've jerry-rigged this. So we can do it just with one player. Oh, maybe not. Anyway, you can see that turning there. All right, just reducing the distance. So just like the front with the, um, with the G clamp, let's push that all the way back in there. So then we can slide it back over the brake pads. Again, we're going to make sure we've got the right pads. So, I mean, this one's a pretty obvious one. These are tiny. Probably don't do much. Look, that looks pretty good. All right, so we've got another little issue here. The outside pads are obviously just marked outside because they're both going to be the same. The other pads are marked inner left and inner right, in R and in L. But what we've taken off here, it's a factory brake pad. I don't think it's ever been changed. Um, and it's opposite to opposite to the markings on the new one. So we're just going to have a Y and see if we can get away with putting it back the way it was rather than the way the brake pad suggest. All right, so we made a decision. I'm just gonna put it back in the way it came out. So we're gonna use the left inner on this side because it matched up the one we took out. I can't see any reason for it not to go there. It's not fouling anything, there's nothing in the way. So I'm gonna hit the caliper. So again, before we put the caliper back on, we're gonna check these slides. Make sure they move nice and smooth, spin. So if you've come this far and you've changed the brake pads in your shit box before you take it for a drive, you want to start it up. Give the brakes a couple of soft pushes like that. Just make sure you actually have brakes. Or you don't put your shit box through a fence or a house or something. After you've done your brake pads on your shit box, what you need to do is take it for a test drive. So, let's get that on there. But before that, you want to check your brake fluid. Make sure that's all good. So, during the test drive, obviously you want to test the brakes. <clears throat> so, in this case, we haven't had to bleed the brakes. Yeah, the reason for that is just because it's a shit box and you want to do it as fast and cheap as possible. So, we'll take for a test drive. Now, what I like to do is go about, you know, 80. Find an 80 zone, obviously, you don't want to be speeding. Um, go 80, break down to about 70 and then speed up back to 80 again, um, just a couple of times. Most brake pads have a, a wear-in strip, or whatever you want to call it, on them. 
most brake pads, um, you probably wouldn't notice it, the difference for normal driving, whether you bother to bed them in or not. So you want to make sure you got a good pedal. So the pedal should have a bit of a, a bit of free travel at the start and then firm up. The other thing is you want to check your handbrake, especially on this type of rear brake where the, um, where it's that screw type that I talked about. So that's pretty good. A couple of clicks. Probably not any more than five, a bit excessive. Wouldn't pass the roadworthy. That's how um, you, that's probably the best way to test and bed in the brakes. Mainly just a mainly just a test so you know the brakes are gonna work. Probably, you know, pull off one or two emergency braking. If you can get up to a hundred kilometer zone and, and then apply the brakes a lot harder than you normally would, that'd, that'd help. But yeah, that's it for your um, brake pads on the shit box. Um, I'd like to thank the owner for letting us use their car for this episode. It's a good shit box. Uh, yeah, and we'll see you in the next episode of how to fix stuff in my shit box, I guess.